Hey guys, welcome back. Corvette, the 70 vet, is back in the shop. We got our parts we've been waiting on, which is a redhead steering box and a new radiator. Our radiator is leaking. It's got some bad crimps in it. Customer drove it a little bit and then went on vacation for a couple weeks. So it's back and we're gonna finish up. <laughs> Click that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you would like more content, follow social media at Cody Crafted on Instagram. All right, so the Corvette is back. It took a little hiatus. The steering box is in. Um, we had a radiator hose that wasn't quite right, so we, we got that swapped out. Customer wanted a fresh set of plugs. Of course, we sent it for alignment. Uh, fresh set of wires. These are getting a little crusty. And they're not horrible, but they definitely have seen some better days. Let me tell you something, fellers and fellets. These stupid chrome covers that route the uh, plugs up under the manifold. They go. Di the plugs go down through the motor mount bolts up under there, and then they route up under, and then they all come out through this little bracket back here, and then all these guys come up together, and then I gotta terminate all of those. That stupid cover sucks. You gotta get the ones without the ends on them because you have to feed them through. And Gladiator's tying up the lift right now, so I don't really have a good option for getting underneath the thing. But either way, so it's not the end of the world, it just takes a little time. So I'm gonna get these swapped out and I will show you guys how to terminate spark plugs here in just a minute. And we will carry on. I've played with the tune a little bit, changed the oil. Like I said, we got the alignment done. We did miss one of the six million vacuum connections when we were putting in our digital tack. There's one that was uh, up underneath the dash that was causing the headlights to not go up and down appropriately and the windshield cowl. You know, an hour's worth of smoke testing to find that. So yay, 70s stuff. So anyways, I'll show you guys how to terminate spark plugs here in just a sec. All right, so comes with stuff for old style socket coil connections. If we had the original distributor, this is what we'd be using, but we don't. So we're using new, AKA female, AKA HEI style boots and such. So I'm gonna try to get you guys a good angle where we can see what's actually going on here. All right, so I got the wires routed. Just doing one side at a time. It's usually best to kind of try to do one plug at a time when you're doing this. So what we're gonna do is we need to mate this to this guy. Set that there. I've already set my length right about a little behind this tape. So we're gonna cut it off right there. Now the tool that comes with the um, tool that comes with the wires usually does a pretty good job. Uh, however. I don't really like it. It's not as cool and it's not as fast. These are iWIS spark plug crimpers. You can get better ones. You know, these are from uh, Jeff Bezos. Um, so you want to strip them back about yay. And so you will trim it and twist. And that pulls right off. Um, you want to go about three quarters of an inch. I actually didn't go quite far enough there. So about three quarters of an inch, maybe a little more. It's okay. A little extra is not going to hurt anything. A little short is going to be a pain, but a little extra is not going to hurt. All right. And then, so we're going to take our terminal end. And I actually like to pinch these a little bit because they're usually just a little bit wide. And the wire is going to fold back the internal spiral core and then it just touches just like that that's all it's doing is it's making contact thusly 
And so we'll take this guy. We can take our crimpers. And these crimpers, like I say, I like these. I think you can, you know, you can get these from Summit. These probably came from Jeff Bezos back at the time. And so we'll flush it on the back and then a nice squeeze. And then we're done. So puts a nice tight crimp on it. The wires, uh, the internal core is crimped up in there. And so our length is bueno. And we take our boot. And a little dielectric grease. Always a good idea. So a little pookie in there. And a little pookie in there. Keeps the water out. Lubricates. Keeps them from sticking where you got to fight them to get them off. And then these, since I got a little schmutz on them, you can just goosh it in there. It takes a little bit of effort. And you guys probably can't see it, but you want it to line up square on the inside. And then it just goes click. Yay. Easy enough. Lather, rinse, repeat. Okay, so talking about what a pain in the butt these uh, chrome covers are. Uh, I've already got them put back on the other side. Um, this one, you can't get the boot. It has to go through the motor mount and it won't go. So I chopped it off um, and I had to go one hand this way and one hand this way in order to make that, uh, in order to make that happen and then pulled the wire out and bye Felicia. So um, here's what I do. This is the longest lead because we're working on cylinder number two. It's all the way at the front. Um, I will do my best to film this for you because I don't know how well this is gonna go. So the thing is, we gotta get, I don't know, you can see my finger right there. Okay, we gotta get down through the back side of that. And we gotta go under here to get to it. You can do it! So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the number one plug. I just think about being a Corvette tech in the 70s and 80s, because this one's a 70. And like, I think you had to change plugs every like 15,000, 20,000 miles, right? Something like that. I mean, that's what we used to do back in the day in the, for our 80s cars. So 70s cars should have been about the same. And, uh, maybe even more often but just how big of a pain in the butt these stupid covers are so on the other side the driver's side you actually have to pull out a exhaust manifold bolt okay now one thing i've noticed these are a tapered seat spark plug and tapered seat spark plugs are for newer stuff so our new spark plug and you can tell it's actually burning pretty good. I'm not a spark plug whisperer, so I'm not gonna try to uh, tell you exactly what's going on. I just know it's kind of tan, maybe a little rich, um, but we also just put the sniper on. This thing's only got about maybe 100 miles since we put the sniper on, so we really can't judge the burn off of the sniper system. So this plug versus this plug, you can tell this has the washer on it and we're going back with the radiums because they're going to burn cleaner um don't see any reason why not to they're really not that much more than old school copper plugs at this point Just back in here and good better otherwise i always like to put a little bit of anti-seize on the threads try not to get it on the porcelain Just a little preventative maintenance or measure. Something that uh, you guys with modern ignition systems may not know about. Gap and plugs. So I have a white paint pin mark on 54,000 or uh, 51 thousandths. Um, we're gapping about, we don't want it to go in there. We want to be at about 45, 
because we do have an aftermarket ignition system. So don't pry against the porcelain. I'm just going to open that up a tick. And we're just going to see. Looky there. Looky there. All right. So now this guy can go in. Also, the proper plugs for this are 13 sixteenths, not 5 eighths. So just FYI. Okay, got it started. Uh, one of the kind of old school tricks that we used to use, and I don't have to do it right now, but if you got one, especially with headers, that's really hard to get to, is you can take a piece of 3 8 fuel hose and put it over the uh, porcelain and, and twist the hose so that way you can't get your fingers in there. Works really good with headers. And we have what's called, in my book, spark plug tight. Okay, so. Here's our new lead. It's full length. This is uh, there's two of each length in the box when you buy your plug wires. So you get the ones you got to build yourself. So let me put you guys back underneath. The short version is you got to feed it through the motor mount pad, like on the back side of it, and then it's got to immediately turn and then snake through this chrome cover. So I'm gonna fight this, and uh, you guys enjoy this, uh, you know, reasonable interlude. <laughs> Okay, so now we're obviously under the car. Um, I do have jack stand and jack, of course. Safety third, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, up underneath, you can see where we mounted our fuel filter. This is a like a Chevy truck fuel filter, and how our fuel lines are routed. Um, okay, so spark plugs. Plug lead comes out of here. And then it has to go on this side. Okay, so it's got to go in this little chrome sleeve right there. So I ran this one on the wrong side. So we're going to try to grab it out of here. This is stupid. <laughs> I'm a GM guy generally. I, I, my shop truck's a Ford, but for the most part, I'm a Chevy guy or a GM guy. Just imagine being a tech at a dealership back in like the 70s and 80s and some, you know, coke sniffing, leisure suit wearing dude that smells like patchouli and high karate has mild the shit out of this thing and uh you know it's 1980 and you got a 10 year old vet some tom Selleck wannabe we love tom Selleck, by the way but um some wannabe tom Selleck had just mild the ever loving hell out of it and you gotta deal with this, you know? Like, oh, my butt's running bad, bro. And, uh, if you're trying to chase plug wires through motor mounts. And yet, that's how they did it. You know, the thing is, I'm having a hard time even finding where the frickin' hardware is to get in there. So it's not like I can just easily unbolt the thing all right so it's been a little bit everything's all put back together uh let's just see if i got it right especially since i already put all the covers back on well i think so So a couple of these plugs that I pulled out of the passenger side are gapped. Number one, they're the wrong plug. I think the thread pitch is metric. You guys see the difference in those two plugs? How much closer this one is 
how much tighter that is on this side versus this one's gap so much tighter than this one well what that does is that's inconsistency in spark a wider spark a longer gap is a bigger lightning bolt to ignite the fuel that's coming through and so you don't want it too big that it doesn't arc but we have a new H, uh, new coil um upgraded msd uh, yeah msd uh 6 efi system we've got a multi-spark box we've got iridium plugs now we've got a brand new distributor that's digitally controlled so we've got what we need to handle things so i'm not going to gap them at 60 thousands but we did go 45 44 is what our wire is so uh definitely a heck of a lot better than the like 25 thou 30 thou that that plug is and there was a couple other ones that were like that um so consistency is the key all right I'm gonna shuffle my truck out of the way and go take it around the block. All right, I got Garrett riding with me on our little test drive. What are we doing, Garrett? Uh, riding around our block. Riding around the block? Yeah, you gonna be my shooter? Appreciate you joining us for this one. Make sure you like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. Like and subscribe for more videos. That's right.